Okay, so in this lesson we're going to talk about graphing linear equations by using intercepts. And when I'm talking about intercepts, I'm talking about the x and y intercepts. Alright, so let's talk about what an x and a y intercept are. Okay, so if you look at this line, um, I have this line here, and I also have this line here. Alright, but let's look at this line first. So if you look at this line, this line crosses the y-axis at this point. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of label that point right here. So this is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. And this is the point where the graph crosses the um, x-axis. So if I zoom in, you can see a little bit better. So notice that this is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, and this is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So this right here is called the y-intercept. The y-intercept. And the point where the graph crosses the um, x-axis is called the x-intercept. Okay? So, um, same thing here, if I look at this other line here. So notice that if you look at this graph, this graph right here, this line, crosses the y-axis and the x-axis at the same point, and it's right here. So that's the point where the graph crosses the um, y-axis and the x-axis. So notice that the, the y-intercept and the x-intercept here are the same point. So this right here is both the x and y-intercept. Okay? All right, so we're going to come back to these two graphs in a little while, but let's go ahead and talk about the definition. All right, so let's go ahead and define what an x and a y intercept is. All right, so an x intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So wherever the graph crosses the x-axis, that's the x-intercept. The y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. Right, so the x-intercept is a point where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So again, if we go back to our line, this line right here crosses the y-axis at this point, so that's the y-intercept, and it, it crosses the x-axis at this point, so that's the x-intercept. Okay, now, let's go ahead and, and actually determine what those x and y-intercepts are. So, remember how to label a point. So if I want to determine what the coordinates of this point is, remember you start at the origin. Remember that's the origin right here where the graph, where the x and the y axis intersect. That's the origin. You store the origin, and since this point that I'm interested in is right above the origin, I just go up. So I don't go right or left. I do not go right or left. So that means that that my x coordinate is zero. I'm at the origin. That's where x is zero. So I don't go to the right. I don't go to the left, I stay there. And then I go up six units, and so my y-intercept is the point zero six. So your y-intercept is a point zero six. If I look at the x-intercept, again, you start the origin. So if I determine what the x-coordinate is, I've got, I've got to go to the left four units. So my x-coordinate is negative four. But I stay there because that's where the point is. The point, I don't go up, I don't go down, I stay. So since I'm staying there, 
since I'm not moving up or down, the y coordinate is 0. Alright, so the y intercept here is 0, 06, so that's the point zero 06. Don't confuse that with 60. Zero. 60 zero is here. The point six zero is here. You go to the right six, you stay. Alright, so be careful where how you label the intercepts. Alright, so the y intercept, my x coordinate is zero. The x intercept, your y coordinate is zero. Now if you look at this other point right here, I mean this other line, excuse me, this other line, so remember we said that the um, this line here across the x and the y axis at the same point. But remember what this point is. That's the origin. So I'm not moving left, right, up, or down. I'm staying there. So that so the x coordinate is zero and the y coordinate is zero. So the the x and y intercept here is the same point. It's zero zero, which is called the origin. Alright, so the origin is the is the uh, point where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect and it has coordinates 0, 0. Alright, now in this in this lesson what's going to happen is that you're going to be given an equation and you're going to be asked for each equation, for each linear equation, you're going to graph using intercepts. All right, so always make sure you follow directions. In the previous lesson, you were asked to graph using a t-table. Here, you, you are asked to graph using intercepts, so you must use the intercepts. Okay, now, so you're going to be given an equation, a linear equation, and you're going to be asked to graph using the intercepts. So let's kind of uh, discuss a little bit further about the x and y intercepts. Now, I want you to notice something. If I were to draw any line, any linear equation like this, and let's and you notice that that these lin, these lines that I'm drawing, I'm intersecting the y-axis. And I want you to notice something. So these are the y-intercepts right here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put a little dot there. And I want you to remember what we just talked about. For each of these, for each of these points for each of these y-intercepts, I want you to notice something about the x-coordinate. What do you notice about the x-coordinates of each of those y-intercepts? So remember, when when determining the coordinates, you always start the origin. Now since, since these are the y-intercepts, and I want to determine what the coordinates are, since I start the origin, I go straight up. So I don't go right-left, so that means my x-coordinate is zero. So whatever these these y uh, values are, my x coordinate is zero. So basically, basically, here's the idea. If you want to find the y intercept, you're going to let x equal zero. So to find the x intercept, the y intercept, you let x equal zero because you notice that no matter where, no matter where my graph crosses the y axis, my x coordinate is always going to be zero. So to find the y intercept, you let x be zero. All right, let's talk about the um, the x intercept. So if I look at some lines that are crossing the x-axis this time, the x-axis. So let's say I have something that looks like this. So I have these lines that are that are intersecting the x-axis. And if I kind of darken the x-intercepts, I want you to notice something about the y-coordinates in those cases. The y-coordinates. So remember, to label a point, you store the origin. So to get to that point, I go to the left, I go to the right, whatever it may be. But I want you to notice something. When I go to the left or the right, and I get to that point, that's where the point is. The point is on the x-axis. So I don't go up or down. I don't go up. I don't go down. I stay on the x-axis. 
So that means that my y coordinate is zero. In all these cases, your y coordinate is zero. So no matter where you are on the x-axis, no matter what point, no matter what point you're looking at on the x-axis, your y coordinate is always going to be zero. So that brings us to the idea that to find to find the y intercept, I'm sorry, the x intercept, you're going to let y equal zero. Okay? All right. So, knowing these ideas right here, we can now graph a linear equation using intercepts. All right, so let's look at the first one. So number one. Suppose we had this linear equation, x minus y equal 4. x minus y equal 4. All right, so notice that, that this is the linear equation in two variables. You have an x, x variable, you have a y variable. And make sure you follow the directions. Directions didn't say anything about using a t-table, where, where you, you used any value for x or any value for y. You're asked to graph this using um, intercepts. All right. Now, if you want to go ahead, if you want to go ahead and use a t-table, you you got to show this though. All right. To find, you're going to say to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you're going to let y equal zero. That's what we just said. You let y equal zero. So in the equation, wherever we see the variable y, wherever we see the variable y, I'm going to plug in zero. So I get x minus 0 equal 4 and using the order of operations x minus 0 is x so my x coordinate is 4 so my x intercept is the point 4 0 that's where the graph is going to cross the x axis at 4 0 so now if I want to find the y intercept I want to find the y intercept remember you have to use zeros you can't use the, what you did in the previous lesson so it, to find the y-intercept, you've you got to say let x equal 0. So I put a 0 here. So if x is 0, where we see the variable x, I plug in 0. So I get 0 minus y equal 4. 0 minus y equal 4. But 0 subtract y is a negative y. So I get negative y equal 4. But remember, I'm trying to get the y, I'm trying to get y by itself. Right now, Remember, this is a negative y, so that means negative 1 times y. The coefficient here is a negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as negative 1y equal 4. And then to get a positive 1 here, remember right now I'm multiplying by a uh, negative 1. The opposite is to divide by negative 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. Always divide by the coefficient. Don't say negative 1y. That's incorrect. You have to divide by the coefficient. Don't divide by the variable. Mathematically, that's incorrect if you say divide by negative 1y because now this becomes a 1, not a y. So negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. 1 times y is y. That's what you want. You want to get a y here. And 4 divided by negative 1 is a negative 4. So I found, I found the y coordinate of my y intercept. So my y intercept is the point 0, negative 4. So if I plot those two points now, if I plot those two points, I get this. So remember to graph, to graph this line, you gotta using intercepts, you gotta find your x and y intercepts, then you're gonna plot those points. You're gonna plot those points. So uh, four zero, when we start the origin, you go to the right four. Since uh, y is zero, you stay. So there's the uh, x intercept. Now, if it says label, remember if it says, if it uses the word label, what that means is don't, just, just don't put a dot there. you got to say in parentheses, this is for zero. That's what we mean by labeling. This is label. All right, the next one is zero, negative four. So you store the origin. Since x is zero, you stay. Since y is a negative four, you go down four. Now remember, you can't see the negative signs here, but all these are negative. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. And so if I label this, that's the point 0, negative 4. And then I use a ruler, and I draw my line. And so I get this. Make sure you extend it, always extend it like this, and then draw your arrows. 
All right, so that's the line for number one, which was x minus y equal four. Okay, all right, let's look at it up. Suppose we had this equation. Let's say we had number two. Um, let's see, all right, let's suppose it was negative three x plus y equals six. And remember the direction says using intercepts. So if, so if I use a t-table and I want to find the x-intercept, then I have to say let y equal zero. You have to let y equal zero. All right, so wherever I see the variable y, I'm going to plug in zero. So I get negative three x plus zero equals six. That's what, that's what y, we let y equal zero. Negative three x plus zero is a negative three x. So I get negative 3x equals 6, and then I solve this linear equation for the variable x. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So right now, I'm multiplying by negative 3. The opposite is to divide by negative 3. Not negative 3x, negative 3. Don't divide by negative 3x. Mathematically, that's incorrect. Because you're gonna because this is a 1 if you do that, this, this uh, term. All right, so negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 1 times x is x, and that's what you wanted. You wanted x. And then 6 divided by negative 3 is a negative 2. So you found, you found the x-coordinate of your x-intercept. So my x-intercept is the point negative 2, 0. Now let's find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you're going to let x be 0 this time. Because remember, wherever the graph crosses the, wherever the graph crosses the um, y-axis, wherever the graph crosses the y-axis, the x coordinate is zero. So if I want to find, if I want to find the y-intercept, I let x be zero. So in the equation, wherever I see the variable x, I plug in zero. So I get negative three times zero plus y equals six. Negative three times zero is zero. So I get zero plus y equals six. Zero plus y is y, so y equals six, and you're done. So that's the y-coordinate of your y-intercept. So I found my intercepts, so then I'm going to plot those points, and I'm going to draw my line. So negative 2, 0, and 0, 6 is what I need to plot. Okay, so negative 2, 0. So I need to plot these two points, negative 2, 0, and uh, 0, 6. Okay, so to plot the point negative 2, 0, remember you start at the origin. And since x is negative 2, I go to the left 2. So I'm here. Since y is 0, I stay. So that's the point. That's the x-intercept. And it, if it says label, you're going to say negative 2, 0, just like this. The y-intercept is 0, 6. So you store the origin. Since x is 0, you stay. Since y is 6, positive 6, you go up 6. So there's the point. There's the y-intercept, and it has coordinates 0, 6. And then you use your ruler. You draw the line, and you're done. Just extend it and draw the arrows. So this is number two, and that equation was negative three x plus y equal six. All right, number three. So number three, let's suppose we had this equation. Let's suppose we had this equation, number three. I suppose it was, uh, the equation is 2x minus 5y equal 10. So again, I'm going to, I want to graph this using intercepts. So I'm going to find the x and the y intercept. So to find the x intercept, you're going to say let uh, y equal 0. So wherever you see the variable y, plug in 0. So I get negative 2x minus 5 times 0, because that's what y is. I'm, I'm saying y is 0, equal 10. 5 times 0 is 0, so I get 2x minus 0 equal 10. 2x minus 0 is 2x, and that's where I'm at. So I've got to get x by itself, though. So I'm going to rewrite this over. And to get the variable x by itself, right now I'm multiplying by 2. The opposite is to divide by 2. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is x, and so x is 5. So the x-coordinate of the x-intercept is 5, so the point, the x-intercept is the point 5, 0. To find the y-intercept, you're going to let x be 0 this time. 
And so if I let x be 0, I get, if I receive the variable, I should plug in 0. So I get 2 times 0 minus 5y equal 10. So 2 times 0 is 0, so I get 0 minus 5y equal 10. 0 minus 5y is a negative 5y, so you got to be careful with your signs. So that's negative 5y. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. And then to get the variable y by itself, right now I'm multiplying by negative 5. The opposite is to divide by negative 5. And so negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. 1 times y is y. And so I get y to be negative 2. So I found, I found the y-coordinate of my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is the point 0, negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to plot the point. I'm going to plot the point um, 5, 0, and 0, negative 2. All right, 5, 0. So I uh, start the origin. Since um, x is a positive 5, I go to the right 5. Since y is 0, I stay. So there's the um, x-intercept. And if I label it, it's going to be 5, 0. The y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So I start the origin. Since x is 0, I stay there. Since y is negative 2, I go down 2. So there's the point um, uh, 0, negative 2. And then I draw the line, extend it, and I get this. So that's the line. Uh, and it's uh, 2x minus 5y equal 10. All right, number 4. So for number four, suppose we had this equation. Suppose we had x equal 4y instead. Just like this, x equal 4y. All right, so do the same thing. And so I'm going to find the x-intercept. So to remember to find the x-intercept, you're going to let y equal 0. So if y is 0, I get this. I get x equal 4 times 0. But 4 times 0 is 0, so I get x to be 0. So you got x by itself, so x is 0. So that means that the x-coordinate of my x-intercept is 0. So that means that the x-intercept is the point 0, 0. But remember, the point 0, 0 is the origin. That's the origin. Now let's look at the y-intercept. So if I look at the y-intercept, I'm going to let x be 0 this time. Now you may say, well, you already have x is 0. Well, that's true. So what do you notice? You notice that the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the same point. All right? But if you didn't recognize this, just go ahead and, and plug 0 in for x and see what happens. So if x is 0, I get this. I get 0 equals 4y. And I get y by itself. To get y by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times y is y. But remember, 0 divided by 4 is 0. And so notice that... that um, in both cases, the x and y intercept is the same point, and that point is the origin. Now, here's the, here's the issue you're going to see, though. To graph a line, to graph these lines, we're using intercepts. Notice so far, there was always, a, uh, there was always an x-intercept, and there was always a y-intercept. So I was able to, to graph the lines without difficulty. But notice in number 4, when I graph number 4, the x and the y-intercept is the same point. It's the origin. But I need one more point to graph this line. So in my math lab, you're going to see this idea. So, so it's going to turn out that whenever the uh, x and y-intercept is the same point, in this case the origin, it's going to be the origin, all you do is just find one more point. So in the t-table then, here's what you're going to do. You're just going to let x be, or y be, in this case let y be. Since x is by itself, since x is by itself, it's easier to um, let y be a, uh, a value. So let y be, let's say, two, uh, let's say 2. So if y is 2, if y is 2, remember letting y equal 2. So if y is 2, I get x equal 4 times 2, so x equal 8. So 8, 2 is going to be a point on that, on that line. So then all you do is plot the point 8, 2, 8, so you go to the left 8, and then up 2, and this is the line that I need to graph.
So that's the line uh, x equal 4 y. So the difference between, you may say, you may ask, well, well why is it, what, what, what's the difference between number 4 and the other 3 in terms of the equation? Notice that when you look at number 4, when you look at number 4 versus, let's say, number 3, that was a constant. See this constant? You had, a, you had an x term, you had a y term, and you had a constant. Here, all you have is an x term and a y term, but you don't see a constant anywhere. So that's why you see you, you end up with the origin being both the x and the y intercept, because there's no constant. There's no constant. Okay. So let's look at number 5. So when we look at number 5, you have this. You have negative x plus 3y equals 6. So let's talk about what we just said. So the question I'm going to ask is this. Will the x and y intercepts be the same point? The answer should be no, because there is a constant listed here other than 0. See here, you didn't see a constant. There was no constant that you physically saw. You didn't see a plus 1, you didn't see a minus 3, you didn't see anything like that. But here you see a constant, that constant 6, so the x-intercept and the y-intercept will be two different points. All right, so let's find them. So let's find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, again, you let y equal 0. So wherever you see the variable y, I plug in 0. So I get negative x plus 3 times 0 equals 6. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, so I get negative x plus 0 equals 6. Negative x plus 0 is negative x equals 6. All right, so now what you want to do next now is rewrite negative x as negative 1x. That's what that means. The coefficient is a negative 1. But to solve for x, you want this coefficient to be a positive 1. So right now, I'm multiplying by negative 1. The opposite is to divide by negative 1. And so notice the negative 1 divided by negative 1 is a positive 1, which is what you wanted. 1 times x is x. And then 6 divided by negative 1 is a negative 6. So the x-intercept is the point negative 6, 0. To find the y-intercept, you're going to let x be 0 this time. So if x is 0, I get negative 0 plus 3y equals 6. Well, negative 0 is 0, so I get 0 plus 3y equals 6. 0 plus 3y is 3y equals 6. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this equation over. And now we got to get y by itself. So I get I need I need a coefficient of y to be a 1 here. Now it's a 3. So to get that to be a 1, I've got, I've got to do the opposite. So right now I'm multiplying by 3. The opposite is to divide by 3. But you divide both sides by 3. What you do one side, you do the other. 3 divided by 3 is 1, which is what you wanted. 1 times y is y. And so I get my y coordinate to be 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I plot the points. I'm going to plot those two points. And I get this. So this is number 5. number 5. All right, so negative 6, 0, I go to the left 6, and I stay, since y is 0. So there's the x-intercept, so that the coordinates are negative 6, 0. Because as labeled, that's what you've got to write. And then 0, 2, 0, 2 um, is here. 0, 2. All right, and so then I, I draw the line. And I get something that looks like this. Extend it. Make sure you extend it through the point and draw your arrows. So that's the line um, negative x plus 3y equal 6. All right, let's do number 6. So number 6, we have this equation. So my equation this time is negative 6x plus 5y equal negative 30. Negative 6x plus 5y equal negative 30. So to find the x and the y intercept, to find the x-intercept, you can let y equal 0. So if y is 0, I get negative 6x plus 5 times 0, because y I'm saying is 0, 
equal negative 30. Well, negative 5 times 0 is 0, so I get negative 6x plus 0 equal negative 30. Negative 6x plus 0 is negative 6x equal negative 30. To get x by itself, to get this coefficient to be a 1, I've got to divide both sides by negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. 1 times x is x, so I get x to be a positive. A negative divided by negative is a positive, so I get a positive 5. So that's the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is 5, 0. To find the y-intercept, you're going to let x be 0. So if I let x be 0, I get negative 6 times 0 plus 5y equal negative 30. Negative 6 times 0 is 0, so I get 0 plus 5y equal negative 30. 0 plus 5y is 5y, so I get 5y equals negative 30. And then you get y by itself, and I want this to be a coefficient of 1. So you get y by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And so 5 divided by 5 is 1, 1 times y is y. And negative 30 divided by positive 5 is a negative 6. So I get the point um, 0, negative 6 for the y-intercept. So if I plot those two points, if I plot those two points, I get um, 5, 0, and 0, negative 6. And so I get this line. Alright, okay, so that was number 6, let's look at number 7. Okay, so number 7, let's suppose we had this, let's suppose we had um, negative 2x minus, uh, let's say 3y equal 6. Alright, now what I'm trying to do is, is I, I don't want you to think, if you look at all these lines, if you look at all the lines that we just did, and it just happened to be the equations I chose. But if you look at all the lines, they're increasing. As you go from left to right, your lines are increasing. So notice they're increasing. They're rising, all of them. But that's not always going to be the case. Okay, that's not always going to be the case. So um, you could have a line that falls instead. It could go down. So don't think that your lines always have to rise. They could fall, okay? All right, so let's suppose we had... Um, this equation. So to find the x-intercept, you're going to let uh, y equal 0. So if I let y equal 0, I get negative 2x minus 3 times 0 equals 6. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, so I get negative 2x plus 0 equals 6. Negative 2x plus 0 is negative 2x equals 6. And if I divide both sides by negative 2, negative 2, Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. 1 times x is x, so I get x to be a negative 3. So I get the point, um, the x-intercept is the point, negative 3, 0. The y-intercept, I'm going to let x be 0. So if I let x be 0, I get negative 2 times 0 minus 3y equal 6. So negative 2 times 0 is 0. So 0 minus 3y equals 6. 0 minus 3y is a negative 3y equals 6. And then we get y by itself. I've got to divide both sides by negative 3. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 1 times y is y. So I get y to be a negative 2. All right. Now, if I plot those two points, I plot those two points, I get this. I get negative 3, 0. Okay, so negative 3, 0 is here. So that's the x-intercept, negative 3, 0. And then 0, negative 2 is here. So there's the y-intercept, 0, negative 2. And then if I graph the line, it knows that this line falls this time. So as you go from left to right, your line falls. Your y-values are decreasing. All right, so don't always assume that, that your line is going to rise. They could fall. Okay, let's look at number 8. Number 8, let's suppose that for number 8 that we had this. Okay, so this will be number 8. We had y equals 2x plus 6. y equals 2x plus 6. Alright, so again, to find the x-intercept, 
find the x-intercept, you let y be 0. All right, now, when I let y, y be 0, notice what happens. I get 0 equals 2x plus 6. But remember, you got to get x by itself. So the x by itself, I've got to, first of all, um, get rid of the 6. So since I'm adding 6, the opposite is to subtract 6. So I get negative 6 equals 2x. And now to get x by itself, I'm going to have to divide both sides by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then my x-coordinate of the x-intercept is going to be a negative 3. All right, let's find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, this time you're going to let x be 0. So I get y equals 2 times 0 plus 6. 2 times 0 is 0. So I get y equals 0 plus 6. So my y-intercept is my y-intercept has the coordinate 6 for y, so my y-intercept is the point 0, 6. So if I go ahead and plot those two points, negative 3, 0, and then 0, 6, I get this line. So that's the line, y equal 2x plus 6. All right, let's look at number 9. For number 9, suppose you had this. You had y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 6 instead. Let's say we had that, y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 6. So again, I, I want to grab this using x and y intercepts. Now remember in the previous lesson, when you use a t-table, you chose values for x that were divisible by 4. Remember that? All right, but in this case, remember in this lesson, you want to use intercepts instead. So always follow directions. So to find the x-intercept, you can let y equal 0. All right, now I'm going to get 0 equal negative 3 fourths x plus 6. All right, now here's here's this, the proper, or here, here's a, a series of, of steps you can take. So first of all, let's let's get rid of the 6. I'm going to subtract. Right now I'm adding 6. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I get 0 subtract 6 is a negative 6. And then this is 0 right here. A positive 6 and a negative 6 is 0. Combining like terms. And so I get negative 6 equals a negative 3 fourths x. Alright. Now what I, what I would do next is see how you're, you're um, dividing by 4 right here. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So you're dividing by 4. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So I'm going to say times 4 times 4. So 4 times negative 6 is a negative 24 equal these 4's divide out. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And you're left with the negative 3y. Now if you wanted to, and, and you could have done this, that's a positive 4, by the way. That's a positive 4. So if you wanted to, where we had this right here, you could have you could have written 4, this 4 is 4 over 1, and then if you look at this right here, 4 times the negative 3 is a negative 12. 1 times 4 is 4. Don't forget the y, though. But remember, negative 12 divided by 4, negative 12 divided by 4 is a negative 12. 3. So you get negative 3y, which is what this is. And then to get um, y by itself, you can divide both sides by negative 3. So I'm going to rewrite this over. And so negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 1 times y is y. And then negative, remember, negative divided by negative is a positive, And 24 divided by 3 is 8. So my x-intercept is the point um, 8, 0. Now to find the y-intercept, you're going to let x be 0. This time it's a little bit easier. You don't have all this work here because when you let x be 0, notice what happens. I get y equal negative 3 fourths times 0 plus 6. Well, negative 3 fourths times 0 is 0. So you get y equals 0 plus 6, and 0 plus 6 is 6. So you found your y-coordinate of your y-intercept. And so now if you plot those points, let me plot the points. Uh, let me see if I can. All right. So let me go ahead and get some grid paper. So if you plot, if you plot the points, that's what we get. 
right, we get, so let's say it was 8, 0, and 0, 6. So 8, 0 is the x-intercept, and then 0, 6 is the y-intercept. So remember, this is 8, 0. If it says to label, you label. And then the y-intercept would be 0, 6. And so if I put the point, uh, if I uh, graph these, this line, remember, always extend it through the points and draw your arrow. So this is uh, number 9. And the equation of that line is y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 6. Okay, now notice notice something. In, in all these lines, if you look at this line here, um, if you look at this line here and this line here, notice that these lines, these lines either um, fell or they rose. Okay? <clears throat> now what made them fall or rise, and I'm gonna I forgot what number seven, the this equation was uh, negative two x minus three y equals six. All right, so what made them fall or rise, if you look at all those lines, is the fact that you had an x term and a y term. See, whenever you have an x and a y term, whenever you have an x and a y term, no matter what your constant is, you're gonna, your, your line will either uh, fall or it will rise, okay? Now, let's kind of review something from a previous lesson. Suppose I look at this equation, and so let's say this is going to be number 10. And so let's say number 10, my equation is x equal negative 5. x equal negative 5. All right, now I want you to think about x equal negative 5. So, so in this lesson, you wanted to graph these lines using intercepts. Okay. So if you think about this, though, if you say, well, I'm going to find the x-intercept, and to find the x-intercept, I'm going to let y equal 0. Okay, but there's no y term here. You don't see a y term. But remember we said earlier when we did this, we said that x always has to equal, in this case, what? Negative 5. That's what x has to equal. So I've got to put negative 5 here. So that's my x-intercept. My x-intercept is negative 5. Now, Remember I said a while ago, you don't see a y term, but you can put a y term if you do this. L look carefully. So x equal negative 5. Now I want you to notice that what, that what I'm about to write is the same thing. Do you agree that, that if I write x as x plus 0 y I equal negative 5, that this is the same thing as this? Because 0 times y is, is 0, and x plus 0 is, is x. So if I go here where I said x-intercept equal, um, let y equal 0, then I would get, I would get x plus 0 times 0 equal negative 5, 0 times 0 is 0, and so x plus 0 is x, so I get x to be negative 5. So um, you didn't have to do this, you, all you had to remember was, was whenever there's no y there, that means that x always has to equal negative 5. But here's the issue, the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, I let x be 0. Okay? To find the y-intercept, that let x be 0. So if I go, if I go, and wherever we see the variable x, I plug in 0, I want you to notice what happens. I get 0 equals a negative 5. But notice this statement. That's a false statement. 0 does not equal a negative 5. That's not a, that, that's not a true statement. You know that 0 and negative 5 are two different numbers. So what that means is that there is no y-intercept there's no y-intercept. So if I graph this line, remember how we graph this line? If I look at a t-table, if I look at a t-table, when I graph this line, remember that means that x always has to equal negative 5. So negative 5, remember that? No matter what y is. So if I graph this line now, number 10, I get negative 5, 0, negative 5, negative 1, negative 5, 2. So negative 5, 0 is here. 
negative 5, um, negative 1 is here, negative 5, 2 is here. Notice I get a vertical line that looks like this. All right. So notice that, that this vertical line does not cross the y-axis. This vertical line does not cross the y-axis. And then if I look at this one here, let's say number 11, and let's say we had y minus 3 equals 0. So um, what I would do there, since there's no x, is I would just get y by itself. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and to get y equal 3. Okay. Now I want you to notice this. Um, from a previous lesson, remember from a previous lesson, if I use that t-table, that means that y always has to equal 3. So that means that in my y column, this is always going to be 3, no matter what x is. No matter what x is, y always equals 3. So if I plot that point, if I plot those points, if I plot those points, I'm going to get 0, 3, 2, 3, and negative 3, 3. I'm going to get this horizontal line. And notice that when I, when I grab this line, y equal 3, there's a y-intercept, but there's no x-intercept. So the point I'm making here is this. If, if the line increases or if the line falls, um, and I lost that page, it increases and it will fall if there's both an x and a y term. If there's, if, if there's no y term or if there's no x term, then it will either be horizontal. Remember in the previous lesson, it will be a horizontal line, or it will be a vertical, a vertical line. Okay. So, if the line falls or if the line rises, there will be an x and a y intercept. What I want you to notice here is that. For this horizontal line, if you have a horizontal line, will, will every horizontal line have a um, y-intercept? The answer is yes. Will every horizontal line have an x-intercept? The answer is no. Will every vertical line have an x-intercept? The answer is yes. Will every vertical line have a y-intercept? The answer is no. Okay? All right, so. Okay, so I want you to notice what we just talked about. So we, we have all these vertical lines right here. Okay, so I drew vertical lines. Notice that all these vertical lines have an x-intercept. All these vertical lines have an x-intercept. Here's the x-intercept here, here's the x-intercept here, and so on, okay? They all have x-intercepts. Now here's a question. Do all of these vertical lines, do all these vertical lines have a y-intercept? The answer is no. This does not cross the y-axis, this does not cross the y-axis, this does not cross the y-axis, and so on. The only one, the only one that crosses the y-axis is this one. This one right here. So if I look at this equation here, this is the equation right here, x equal um, negative 8. This is the equation x equal, that's a negative 5 here, so x equal negative 5. This is negative 2, so that's the equation x equal negative 2. This right here is the equation x equal 4. And this is the equation x equal, that's an 8, x equal 8. So, 
notice that all these equations right here that I've just shown you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, do not have a y-intercept. The only one, the only vertical line that has a y-intercept is x equal 0. x equal 0. All right, so x equals 0, x equals 0 is the only vertical line that has a y-intercept. Only vertical line that has a y-intercept. Okay? That's the only one. Because that's, that's the only vertical line that crosses the y-axis. In fact, if you look at it, it crosses the y-axis at an infinite number of points. No matter where you are on this on this line, it it crosses the y-axis. So there's an infinite number of y-intercepts. So an infinite number of y-intercepts, but only one x-intercept. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the horizontal lines. So look at the horizontal lines. So let's go back and talk about discuss what we said earlier. So all these horizontal lines have a y-intercept. They cross the y-axis. They all have y-intercepts. But here's a question. Do all of them, or do any of them, do any of them have an x-intercept? So, notice this is y equal, that's a 9. So that's y equal 9. Does that equation, does that line, y equal 9, have an x-intercept? The answer is no, because it does not cross the x-axis. It only crosses the y-axis. So that's, that's the only intercept it has. For this one, the only intercept is this point here. That's the y-intercept, and that's the line y equal, that's a 5, so y equal 5. Over here, let's go to the bottom one. This is the only intercept you see, which is the y-intercept, and that's the point, uh, that's the equation y equals negative 5. But here, look at this line here. This horizontal line has a y-intercept right here. But it also has a bunch of x-intercepts, an infinite number of them. So, so this line here, which is y equal 0, y equals 0, is the only horizontal line that has x-intercepts. y equals 0 is the only line that crosses the y-axis. The only horizontal line, excuse me, that crosses the y-axis. Okay, so this is the only horizontal line that has, and it has an infinite number of x-intercepts, that has, that has x-intercepts. All the others, all the other horizontal lines do not. Okay? Alright, so that's going to take care of this lesson. So it's a quite involved lesson, but um, important information in this lesson.